Good morning. I am Dr. Alice Marni. I am a professor with the Department of Commerce, Christ University, Bangalore. So I am working with the Christ University since 1994, August. So this is my 28th year of service. And I got the privilege to tax income tax paper for so many years. So the advantage is that I know that I can read the what all the difficulties they are facing, how the subject has to be taught in a systematic way. Because one thing I have noticed that, see BCom students or BBA students or MCOM students, right from 11th standard, they are, get, they are learning the subject accounts or statistics. Whereas income tax, it's introduced in the third year. So most of the students find it difficult. So that is the problem. So this subject, most of the students, they have an aversion towards the subject or they fear the subject, whether they can clear that. And if you see the textbook, if it's a big textbook, it's prepared for BCom students, BBA students, MCom, those who are doing ICWA, those who are doing CA. Other subjects, you will get the textbooks prescribed according to university syllabus. In income tax, it is not possible. So with all this idea in mind, I have applied for a MOOC course on income tax. So it will be helpful for the BCom students, BBA students, and MCom students, and MBA students. When I check the syllabus, almost all universities, either at the undergraduate level or at the postgraduate level, income tax is taught as a compulsory paper. So this module, I am going to explain an introduction about the subject, certain basic concepts, because I have seen that if I tell the word SSE also, they will get scared because they are not used to that word. Assessment year, previous year, provisions, computations, different computations in salary chapter. So if you have not dealt in a systematic way, it will be really difficult. So that is the idea of this MOOC course, and this is what I'm going to do that. So I'll start with a small presentation on module one. So I'll just give you some basic concepts about this. First one is what is income tax? So what is income tax? So income tax in India is a tax paid by individuals or entities. Either as an individual, he is paying tax or as a business entity, he is paying tax. That is very important. Individuals, when they are paying tax, we call it as personal income tax. Business entities, when they call it paying tax, we are calling it as corporate tax. Depending on the level of earnings or gains during the year, that meaning a person, if they are paying tax, then it is based on his earnings. Earnings can be of different types. Earnings, earnings on the basis of salary, royalty, examination, remuneration, consultancy fees, business income, partnership, share of income from partnership, share of income from Hindu undivided family, different things are there. Similarly, in the case of business entities, it's the profit or gain made during the financial year. So you have to remember that our syllabus is including only personal income tax. So we will be doing only with the personal income tax. We will not be dealing with the corporate income tax. Then next point I want to tell you is that government of India decides the rate of income tax as well as income tax slabs on which individuals are taxed. So this is another important point. Government of India decides the rate of income tax. Every year, our central finance minister will present an annual budget for both the houses of parliament. So then, after presenting that, there will be discussions, debates, and it will take its time to approve that in both the houses of parliament. After getting approval, it will go to president for signature. So once it's signed by the president of India, then it will become an act for one year. So every year they will make the changes. So this is very important. That's why I told you in the beginning, this is one reason students fear the subject. If I'll always tell the students, the year in which you are learning the subject itself, you have to clear this. If due to any reason, if next year you have to write the supplementary exam, you will have to learn the new provisions because government might have made changes in the annual budget. So that will be difficult for you to learn without the help of a teacher. So I hope that this online classes will be helpful even if we had to write a supplementary exam or miss an exam due to any other reason. Next is what is income tax? So you have to remember income tax annual budget is presented in the parliament every year on February 1st. 
So you have to remember, I told you that budget is presented to both the houses of parliament. So earlier our practice was we used to have two budgets. One about railways submitted, presented by the central Ra railways minister and one with the finance minister. So both uh, budgets were there, one for railway and one for finance. Our late finance minister, Mr. Arun Jaitley, wanted to combine these two budgets and to present it as one budget. So this was his idea to present one budget and the date of presenting the budget also changed to February 1st. So earlier practice of presenting the budget in March is changed and now we are getting the budget February 1st every year. And then we have only one budget that is presented by the central finance minister. Only one budget which is inclusive of railways and finance. So that is the advantage. And now at present Mrs. Nirmala Sidharaman is the central finance minister and madam is presenting the budget for us on February 1st. This year February 1st also madam has presented the budget and that provisions will be applicable for the next year. What madam has presented last year we are going to learn this year. So income tax rates are changed every year. You have to remember that See, income tax rates are changed every year. I told you, every budget, depending on the economic conditions, usually government will present, will prepare an annual survey covering all sectors. They will discuss with central finance minister, will discuss with industry experts, income tax experts, every field, small scale industries, medium scale industries, bankers. So everyone, they will have discussions and they will at the same time, they will conduct a survey also to find out what are the economic conditions prevailing in India at that time? So based on that, every year they will present the annual budget. So changes will be there. That you have to remember that changes will be there in every year annual budget. So next year, what because of this lockdown for 70 days and less economic activities, it will be a more, use, more privileged budget we are going to get. That is what I suppose because government wants to help the people through the budget. So that is what we are expecting and now I want to tell you about definition of tax. So definition of tax you have to remember it's a compulsory payment made to the government by the general public. So here you have to remember it's a compulsory payment. Nobody likes to pay tax. When I pay tax I feel that somebody is taking away my hard earned money. You might have heard that your parents are paying money, your teachers are paying money, some institutions are, all the institutions are paying money. Everyone, nobody likes to pay because we can enjoy, we feel that we can enjoy that, but it's not possible. Two things are certain in this world. It's called, one thing is once you're born, it's death is certain. Second point is tax payment is certain. You cannot ex evade tax payments. Now, the usual question is why we have to pay tax? Why we have to pay tax? I want to tell you. See, we are getting so many benefits from the central government and state government. We are having public park, public transport, railways, infrastructure, highways, national highways, street, street lights, transformer, electricity. So all these benefits government is providing us. If we are not giving, how, and how government will get the revenue? Government will get the revenue through various fees, commission and tax we are paying to the government. So that is the source of revenue. So tax is a major source of revenue for the government. And through the tax collected by the government, either at the center or at the state, they are doing and they are utilizing that fund for the developmental activities of the state or center. Now, features of income tax in India. One thing you have to remember, it's levied as per the constitution of India. So that is very important, levied as per the constitution of India. I told you annual budget, when it will get the approval of the president of India, that will become an act for one year. Next year again, there will be changes. So here, Constitution of India is giving the right. That's why the last slide I have explained that you cannot escape tax payments. If you earn an income, either as an individual or a business unit, you have to pay tax. You cannot escape tax. Consequences of not paying tax or evading tax, everything will be, severe consequences will be there. So always I advise my students, when you get a job after your graduation, even if you are not coming within the tax liability, it's better to, be transparent and you have to file the tax returns with the government. The reason is that it's a valid document. If you want to travel abroad, if you want to apply for a visa, if you want to apply for a passport, 
if you want to apply for a bank loan anything it will be helpful so it's always remember it's always better to file the tax returns now next point you have to remember levied by the central government see certain taxes are collected by central government certain taxes are collected by the state government so it remember that income tax is a central government tax income tax is collected by the central government there is no mediator involved in paying that we are directly paying it to the income tax department and it's going to the government treasury central government treasury there are certain taxes are state taxes the best example is the liquor tax you remember in the lockdown period government state governments are finding it difficult to meet expenses so what they were doing is first thing delhi government they decided they opened the liquor shops because liquor they increased the rate and they sold the liquor shops all other states followed that so the reason is that they were not having revenue and if they have opened the liquor shops do you remember lockdown period it's not possible to open any shops so lockdown period if government is giving the sanction and if liquor shops are open whatever they will sell the tax that it can be utilized by the state government and you know that those who are addicted to alcohol even if they have money even if they have to sell the anything whatever means they will get money they will buy the liquor so that is the best way to collect revenue by a state government but here you have to remember income tax is a central government tax and central we are paying it to the central government next point you have to remember it's a direct tax why direct tax direct tax i told you there is no mediator in between when you are paying the tax you are directly paying whereas indirect tax meaning gst is an indirect tax if you go to a restaurant or a hotel and you have food so when you get the bill what all the items you ordered plus gst will be there you are not paying directly to government in this case you are paying it to the shopkeeper so shopkeeper will collect from all the customers for that month and they will make payment to the government so one mediator is involved in indirect tax whereas direct tax is a direct payment now features of income tax in india one is annual tax it's an annual tax once in a year only we have to make the payment but it will be difficult for the people to make payment at one shot see for example i am in the 30% tax bracket plus 4% cess will be there so 34% tax if i have to pay for one year at one shot from january february march at least 3 months salary i have to keep there for that so it will be difficult for me because i may not get enough income for the 3 months to run my activities to run my family to meet my expenses so it will be really difficult for me so what i will do or government will do every month when i'll get my gross salary they know that i am in 30% tax bracket so directly 30% tax they will deduct from my gross salary and only the net salary i will get so 30% is deducted and it's paid to the government treasury every month so i am getting the benefit of paying my tax in installments government is also getting the benefit of collecting tax from me as different installments they don't have to wait for one year they are getting every month so they can also meet their expenses with the amount collected from the people those who are supposed to pay the tax so it's an annual tax next point it's a tax on person tax on person meaning i have to remember it's not only individuals many you will learn in next module i'm going to explain who is a person for income tax so here you have to remember a person can be an individual a person can be a partner in a partnership firm or a partner or a partnership firm or a hindu undivided family or an ngo anything so we will come to that in the next module remember that these are all except business entities whoever paying tax or person income tax personal income tax we are calling it as individuals we will learn in the next module who all are included in that module then you have to remember it's tax on income see whatever you earn as income you are paying tax your income can be from different sources your salary your royalty your rental income your dividend income your bank interest if i am going to another institution as a resource person they will give me some money so that can be an income then if you are going to uh, do an examination remuneration will be there invigilation remuneration will be there phd thesis evaluation will be there all this club together will be my income for the year and i have to pay tax for that next is income of the previous year is taxed in the relevant assessment year this is very very important you have to remember that whatever income i earned in the previous year see this previous year and assessment year 
this is basic concepts for income tax. And in the next module, I'm going to explain with the details what is previous year, what is assessment year. So you have to remember that income of the previous year. Now, what is the previous year for this year when you're going to learn this subject? You know that it's a financial year. Just the preceding financial year is the previous year. And this, whatever this running year is the current assessment year. So this you will learn in the next module again. So time being, I'm explaining that previous year is the last financial year. That meaning April 1st, 2019 to March 31st, 2020 is the previous year. So whatever income I earned, I told you from different sources, I can earn income. So whatever income I earned in the previous year will be taxed in this year. This year, assessment year meaning April 1st, 2020. See, after March 31st, 2020, again, next financial year is starting. So, that will be my assessment year. April 1st, 2020 to March 31st, 2021. So, this August 31st is the usual deadline for filing the tax returns. So, when August 31st, when I am filing my tax returns, whatever income I earned in the last financial year, I am paying tax. Next point, you have to remember prescribed rates of tax. This is very, very important. I will tell you. See, till last year, a person earned income up to 250,000 was exempted from paying tax. Now, this year, when you will learn, including tax rebate. Tax rebate is a concept you have to learn with the computation of tax liability. I will explain that. Now, for the time being, tax rebate and the exemption limit, a person earned income up to 5 lakhs. You don't have to pay tax. So, this keeps changing every year. Similarly, rates of tax also will change. Now, this year up to 5 lakhs is exempted. From 5 lakhs to 10 lakhs, one percentage will be there, either 5% or 10%. From 10 lakhs to 15 lakhs, another percentage will be there. 15 lakhs to 20 lakhs, another percentage will be there. So, every year this keeps changing. Next point you have to remember, it's administered by the central government. So, it's not easy to cheat the central government. I told you, it's better, even if you are not coming in the tax liability, it's better to file the tax returns and be transparent with the income tax department. So, this administered by central government and consequences will be very high. Sometimes rate of penalty they will decide. It's, it's the discretion of the officers. In say some cases, it's the discretion of the officers. So, they can decide it's 100%, 200%, 300% of the tax liability you are supposed to pay. So, that's not easy to play with the income tax department so always it's better to file the tax returns and be proper with the tax payments now we are coming to the features of income features of income you have to remember it's a definite source it's a definite source meaning you are getting income from some other source say i told you my salary when i'll work for the university i will get my salary when i'll write a book i'll get royalty from publishers if I have a second house property that I have given it on rent, I will get my rental income that I am receiving from my tenant. Bank interest I am collecting from bank. Dividend I am collecting from companies. So, these are all definite sources of income. Second point you have to remember, income must be received from outside. See, I, as a housewife, I will do, as a wife or as a mother, I will do a lot of household activities. I will clean the vessels, I will clean, I will wash the clothes. I will do household work, I will buy provisions, I will cook for the family, everything. I will keep and keep the house clean and tidy. All this I will do, but nobody pays for me. That's expected from me. So, income I will receive when I do somebody else work. See, when I go and work in the university, they will pay me because I am doing their work. So, that is income must be received from outside. Next point, you have to remember tainted income. Tainted income meaning illegal income. Please remember that. If you are making income through legal means or illegal means, it will be taxable. So, that is very important. Illegal means legal punishments will be there. So, that either police department or customs or defense, any other central government agency, they will take the action. Here, if you earn through legal means or illegal means, you have to pay tax. Illegal means of making money, black marketing, hoarding, hawala transactions, terrorist activities, all these are in the illegal income. So, here you have to remember legal income and illegal income. You have to disclose to the income tax authorities and you have to pay tax for that. The legal consequences of making and doing an illegal activity, they will, other concerned departments will take its own action. Police department, directorate of enforcement, 
defense police or any other department they will take the action continuing with that application of income so application of income meaning if i get my salary i got every right to spend the way i want to spend my salary but that is not an excuse for not paying tax you cannot go to the income tax department and you cannot say that i had spent the full amount of my salary so i don't have any money to pay tax see when i'll get my uh, salary government will i have to pay tax that is sure but i cannot go and tell that i had spent the entire money i, I don't have money to pay tax that will not be accepted application of money meaning you will be spending from your salary for so many things i'll be paying my car loan housing loan uh, my meeting my family expenses child education marriage expenses so many other things traveling entertainment all this i'll be spending so the, but that is not the criteria for not paying tax application of income you can utilize you can spend your income the way you want to spend nobody will ask you how you spend that amount but if you received an income you have to pay tax next is temporary or permanent income see there are two types of income either temporary or permanent income say for example i am writing a book this year so i'll get royalty for this year from the publishers next year if i am not writing that book or any other book i will not get royalty from the publishers so royalty is a temporary income similarly if my second house property this lockdown period i am not getting tenant for 6 months so that will become a temporary income whereas if i got the tenant for the 12 months then it will become a permanent income my salary is a permanent income so income can be either temporary or permanent if you receive temporary income or permanent income together you are disclosing to the income tax department and you are paying tax continuing with that voluntary receipts voluntary receipts is i work for orphanages for so many years i am working for orphanages so i know that they don't have any income so how they will function they collect donations from either individuals or company csr they will get that is what the income they will get and they will meet the expenses so here they are receiving an income they are meeting some expenses so they will also disclose to the income tax authorities they will also go for the audit procedure and if there is anything they will pay the tax now disputes regarding title of income this is another point you have to remember see if there is a dispute regarding title of income especially in the case of a house property imagine in the case of a house property so what you are doing is there is a dispute with the land owner and the tenant so land owner is saying that i am the owner tenant is saying that i am the owner the matter is in the court so that will take its own time to settle that issue so here you have to remember if as per the book records of the government if land owner is the owner and he is supposed to receive income he has to pay tax at the time of filing the returns otherwise if tenant is the owner as per the records of government he has to pay tax but the problem is if the court decides something else whoever at present owner is not the owner and the other person will be the owner the court will only settle that issue between the owner and the tenant whereas income tax department whoever the be the owner at the time of filing the returns he has to pay the tax next is income in cash or kind some items we will get as cash my salary i'll get as cash my rental income i'll get as cash dividend interest all this i'm getting as cash there are certain things i'll get is in kind in kind meaning see if i am in a police department if i am if i am an ips officer i'll get my uniform allowance i'll get my office car petrol diesel bengaluru orderly gardener cook you name the item you will get that so if you are getting an income in kind also it will be taxable this you will learn in salary chapter how you are going to do that see if i am getting uniform allowance 12000 i'd spend only 9000 3000 is my income that will be added to my income like that for each and every item calculation will be there that we will learn in salary chapter continuing with that income of an ssc so the term ssc itself students will take time to grasp that term ssc meaning the person paying tax to the income tax department when i am paying tax i am an ssc for the income tax department if infosys is paying tax infosys is an ssc if wipro is paying tax wipro is an ssc hal if they are paying tax they are an ssc so whoever paying tax it's an ssc so don't get worried about the term ssc ssc means the person paying the tax i can remember that if i'm taking a face to face class in the first class i'll go and explain this term that word ssc itself will be scary for the students 
they will get scared how oh, the spelling itself they find it difficult but no need to worry about that i told you we are going to learn this in a systematic way next thing you have to remember treatment of gifts so this at present the gift tax act says that a person earned a gift up to 50000 it will be exempted now from whom he can accept a gift either from his parents or from his grandparents either at the time of marriage or through a will that will be exempted but there are certain loopholes in the system the best brains of the country they are cheating income tax department through this so the chartered accountants will advise the client see there is a loophole in this gift act they can do that so like that central government has also noticed that many people are misusing this act so they are come going to come with the amendments quite soon now next point you have to remember income includes loss income includes loss meaning you have to remember that see in the case of a, if a person is running a business activity imagine before lockdown period he got profit all the years but now this lockdown 70 days of lockdown and disruption in the business activity he might have ended up making a loss imagine his loss for this year is 5 lakhs so this also he has to report to the income tax department it is going to be beneficial for the ssc the reason is that we got a provision to set off loss with the next year's profit or for few years four years or eight years what if they are able to make some profit they can set off this loss i'll tell you that if next year imagine this year loss is 5 lakhs next year they are making a profit to 15 lakhs so actual practice they have to pay tax for 15 lakhs and they have not paid tax anything this year because they made a loss but the advantage is that next year you don't have to pay tax for 15 lakhs because now this year profit this year loss of 5 lakhs can be subtracted from 15 lakhs so next year profit will be reduced to 10 lakhs and you have to pay only 10 lakhs for 10 lakhs for the tax payment so this is an advantage so even if you are incurring a loss you have to report to the government now surplus from mutual activity that you have to remember if more than one person is doing an activity it will become a mutual activity so here mutual activity meaning it can be a partnership it can be hindu undivided family anything so partners they are joined and they are doing the activity or hindu undivided family all the family members are doing some activity if they make some profit that also will be an income no double taxation of income you have to remember that in india only once you have to pay tax again and again for the same income you don't have to pay tax so only once you will pay tax and once you settle that issue then they will not ask you to make the payment again this is against the income tax act double taxation of income so last point we are coming to exempted incomes so this is under section 10 so this is very very important you have to remember that always i have seen this question in section b see some examiners will ask explain or give endless list 10 provisions of section 10 they will not mention that exempted income some examiners will mention that uh, from exempted income list eight items or 10 items for section b each point will carry one mark so what i have included when i check the when i check the textbook some 300 400 items are there in exempted incomes so which all you are going to cover in your syllabus i have included so that you can relate with that when you learn that and this also you can remember that it belongs to section 10 so we can find the answer properly so first one is agricultural income you have to remember that india is an agrarian economy so here our for our after independence they decided that first five year plan they will give importance for agricultural income because we don't have many industries at that time so agrarian economy poor farmers small land holdings so they will cultivate their land they will grow something and what all outcome they will get they will sell in the local market and they will make some money that will not an income for their household expenses only they will get so with that with that concept income tax department has decided they will not tax agricultural income the idea was to help the small and marginalized farmers they don't have any other means of income whereas this is also another loophole in the system many people are taking advantage of this section i know that many rich planters those who got 1000 acres of land 2000 10000 20000 they will not pay any tax because there's also is an agricultural income so the central government is deciding to make changes in this provision also agricultural income will be exempted maybe they may make it as only for the small and marginalized farmers not for everyone for the rich planters and all they have to pay tax 
now gratuity received by employees at the time of leaving the job or at the time of retirement you have to remember that gratuity meaning is this is possible for state government and central government employees so if you have put in 35 years of service or 45 years of service or 30 years of service at the time of retirement you are eligible to get a compensation from the government so that's a lump sum amount so that is what you are going to receive and either at the time of retirement you will get or as per the new labor act you have to remember that if you have completed 5 years of service if you are leaving the job maybe due to any other reason you got a better job somewhere else or if you due to health reasons or personal reasons you want to change the job but you have completed 5 years of service in this organization so you are eligible to get gratuity so both will be accepted so either at the time of leaving the job after working the organization for 5 years or at the time of retirement so this gratuity is applicable only for government employees that is state government and central government employees next is compensation received in case of any natural disaster so you have to remember that bhopal gas tragedy is declared as a natural disaster many people got affected with the bhopal gas tragedy that is loss may be different for different people some people got 10000 some people got 25000 some people got 50000 those who are severely affected they got few lakhs of rupees so everything will be exempted from income tax because it's a natural calamity to remember that it's central government has to take the decision they have to declare what is natural calamity so bhopal gas tragedy was declared as a natural calamity i hope you recollect the issue of state kerala state last year when the state was affected with flood so they decide they de uh, they requested the central government to declare it as a natural disaster but they didn't do so so it, the compensation received for flood affected victims of kerala state it's not exempted they have to pay tax for that but if it would have been declared as a natural disaster then it would have been exempted continue with exempted incomes dividend received from indian companies you have to remember that dividend received from indian companies so here indian companies are there and foreign companies are there indian company is a company registered in india foreign company is a company registered outside india see wipro infosys hal bhel bel all are examples of indian companies whereas city bank kfc uh, hin hindustan unilever limited hul all these are examples of foreign companies but you have to remember this if you are receiving a dividend from an indian company it will be completely exempted this point is very important not only for section 10 when you will learn income from other sources usually to make mistakes in the problem what we will do is we will include two three dividends received by the ssc from indian companies so if the student is not thorough with this concept then they will include that indian dividend also for computing income from other source then the answer will be completely wrong so make sure that any dividend received from an indian company is exempted whereas dividend received from a foreign company will be taxable next point you have to remember share of income from hqf this provision is based on no double taxation of income hindu undivided family what all activity they are doing as a family they are collectively paying tax again after tax all male members in the family by birth they are giving the right to be a male member so they will get the income from the hindu undivided family so here you have to remember hf has first paid the tax now again for that share of a male member if again he is paying tax it will be double taxation of income so there is no double taxation of income in our country so if a male member from hf is getting any income a share of income from hindu undivided family it will not be taxable because collectively hindu undivided family has paid the tax for the entire family continuing with that share of income from partnership so you have to remember that same provision of double taxation see partnership collectively has paid tax for the income they earned and after tax this profit will be shared in the with the partners in the profit sharing ratio so again if the partners have to pay tax it will be double taxation of income so that will not be allowed so only partnership collectively they will pay tax so that is one thing you have to remember whereas salary commission bonus etc received from partnership firm by partners will be taxable only share of income from partnership will be exempted 
So when you write the point, you make sure that you're writing the correct point. It's not salary, commission, bonus that are, that are all taxable. What individual partners will get. This is share of income from partnership will not be taxable. I hope it's clear. Next point is any income from investment by an NRI in securities issued before 1st June 2002. So here you have to remember that any income received by an NRI received by an NRI. You know that how important is NRI investments for our country, especially for a state like Kerala. Many NRIs are there. They are working in different parts of the country. Similarly, for our country as a whole, if you take also many NRIs are there. So this, whatever income they earn, they have to send it to the home country or our parent country, India, then it will be beneficial for the government because they will get investments or savings from other countries. So those who are working there, if they will send their money, hard earned money, then the government will get more money. So more savings they will get. So that will be, they can utilize for the developmental activities of the country. Similarly, any investment made by an NRI in shares and securities issued before 1st June 2002 will be exempted. So this is just to encourage NRI investments in our country. Next point is allowances given by government to its employees posted abroad. Indian ambassadors, those who are working in IMF, Indian uh, International Monetary Fund, World Bank, World Health Organization. All employees will get this elements. See our MP, present MP Shashi Tharoor was working with the World Health Organization, World Bank. He was working with the World Bank and uh, he, then another person I can give you the example is uh, Ms., uh, present Pudusheri Governor Dr. Kiran Vedi. She was the IMF Police Advisor for so many years. I think 10, year, 10 years or 15 years back. So they will get a lot of allowances. Any number of travel they can make from the country, out of the country, including their family members. Then they will get a bungalow, they will get a car, they will get cook, gardener, orderly, uniform, dress, anything. You name the item, they will get. So all the allowances, whatever they will get from the government, if you are posted in a foreign country, that will be completely exempted. See, for example, if an ambassador, Indian ambassador posted in Afghanistan, whatever he will get there, it will be completely exempted. Continuing with that, commuted value of pension. This is very important. Regular pension will be taxable and commuted value of pension will be exempted. So, you have to remember that this concept you are going to learn in salary chapter in detail. So, that is why I have included this in the exempted income also. So, you can remember that commuted value of pension is exempted and you will, in detail, you will learn the salary computation. So, here I will ex explain that. See, one third of the last drawn salary will be the pension, usually. Imagine, if I will retire in 2025. So, if my last drawn salary is 3 lakhs, I am supposed to get 1 lakh as pension. That will be my regular pension. So, there is a difference between regular pension and commuted pension. So, up to retirement, my salary was 3 lakhs. Now, regular pension from the date of retirement, it's coming to 1 lakh. Both will be taxable. Whereas, commuted value of pension, the concept is that if you are in need of money at the time of retirement. See, for example, the usual understanding is that all major expenses would have been completed by an employee. Children's education, children's marriage, house property, car, all the major expenses. Then they utilize the pension benefits for maybe for traveling, maybe for or unexpected expenses like hospital hospitalization expenses or treatment for major diseases. So in that case, if your earnings are not sufficient, you can request the government to compute the value of pension. That meaning, see for example, if it's a cancer or HIV or COVID-19, hospitalization expenses are very high. So what you will do? You are requesting to government, I want to commute my pension. See, if I am requesting government to commute 50% of pension, that meaning I told you my regular pension is 1 lakh. So that 1 lakh regular pension will reduce to 50,000, that will be taxable. That's regular pension. Whereas, I will get some few lakhs, if, for example, if I am getting 25 lakhs as commuted value, that will be completely exempted. Government will not give us the explanation how they are calculating that. They will calculate based on the life expectancy of the people and they have their own calculation. So they will give me a lump sum amount that I will utilize for my unexpected expenses, but that is completely exempted. I don't have to pay tax for that. Next point is amount received as leave encashment on retirement. So leave encashment is another benefit state government employees can utilize. 
This is possible only at the time of retirement. Please remember that this provision is there. Leave encashment provision is there while in service. So if you are encashing your leave while in service, it will be completely taxable. You remember this lockdown period, government has freezed this concept. Leave encashment is not possible now. Till the economy will revive, it is not possible. So now I will explain what is the concept of leave encashment. See this, there are different types of leave. Cash leave, earned leave, sick leave, maternity leave, paternity leave, all that. This explanation is based on cash leave and earned leave. See cash leave, most of the organizations, they will give 15 days leave in a year. Due to any reason, if you are not able to work, you don't have to give prior notice. If you are not, if you fall sick today morning, next day when you go to, today you don't have to inform the management. Next day when you will go, submit the leave form. You tell that you are sick, you are not able to uh, come to office yesterday. So that's it. But if you are taking cash leave for more than three days, it will be adjusted from your earned leave. So only for government employees it's possible. I, any government employee, if you work for a year, it's like a bank account. 10 days of leave will be credited to your account. So imagine I got 28 years of service. So 280 days of leave is credited to my earned leave account. But my, when I check my balance, it's not 280. It's only 190 or something. Because sometimes my cash leave has exceeded more than 3 days. One more thing you have to remember when you're talking about cash leave. Cash leave you have to remember. See, if I'm taking a leave on Friday and I'm reporting next Tuesday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, four days will be, so it can be not be adjusted with cash leave. It will be four days of leave. You don't think that Sunday will be ex ex excluded from the leave. Any public holiday, any Sunday will come in between the cash leave will be counted as leave. So that is how earned leave is getting reduced. So the advantage is that at the time of retirement, they will check how many days of leave you have at the time of retirement. Up to 10 months you can claim. 10 months meaning 300 days of leave should be there at your account. So it's not possible. Imagine if my leave is only 240 days. So that meaning 240 divided by 30, 8 months of earned leave I can. That means sufficient for 8 months of my salary I am eligible to get. As my encashment of leave for 8 months. So if my salary, last drawn salary is 3 lakhs, I may get 24 lakhs just by encashing my leave, which I have accumulated over the years. So that is another benefit. I am not, I don't have to pay tax for that. I will not get the full salary. There is divisions, some case, some things they will not add and all. But just for exam, example, I am taking, if my leave is 3 lakhs, 8 months leave I can encash, meaning 24 lakhs. What full 24 lakhs they will, we will not get? Full salary will not be counted. There will be deductions from that. Only the gross salary. Gross salary will not be considered. Some, some allowances and all, they will not include for the encashment of leave. But it's a good amount. So that is, just we are getting this amount by accumulating the leave. That is advantages at the time of retirement. Now, next point is payment received from statutory provident fund or SPF. This also you have to remember. See, there are different types of provident fund. You will learn in the salary chapter. Statutory provident fund is there. Recognized provident fund is there. Unrecognized provident fund is there. Public provident fund is there. So remember, statutory meaning it's compulsory. It's under the state government. Statutory provident fund meaning those who are working in banking sector and all, they are getting the statutory provident fund. But for teachers, we are entitled to pension We are not, and gratuity. We are not getting the provident fund. So statutory is compulsory. The concept of provident fund is Employee will be contributing certain amount and employer will be contributing certain amount. So this gift will get accumulated and at the time of retirement you will get the lump sum amount. But here you remember that only the payment from statutory provident fund will be exempted. Other three provident funds will not be exempted that you will learn in the salary chapter in detail. Next is retrenchment compensation given to workers. Now what is retrenchment compensation? This lockdown period you might have heard that many organizations are terminating the employees. They don't have money to give the salary. So what they will give? They will give a compensation. Maybe three months salary or four months salary or two months salary. Or just like a token advance, they will give something. Because till they will find another job, they have to live. They have to survive. So that compensation will be exempted. Now, 
Next point you have to remember, retirement compensation received or receivable from a public sector or any other company. We have seen that if a state government or central government employee will retire from service, they will get gratuity. Similarly, people working in companies, whether it's a public sector company or private sector company. For if you put in so many years of service, 30 years of service, 35 years of service, you are entitled to some compensation. That will also be completely accepted. Next point you have to remember, any amount received from LIC on maturity of policy with or without bonus. So life insurance policy, I can remember that when I joined the organization, it was a meager salary I was getting at that time in 1994. But still I used to pay 100 rupees, 200 rupees every month for my LIC payment. I started my savings with LIC. So now the advantage is that now 2025 I am going to retire. But every year one of the other policy is getting matured and I am getting some payment from the LIC. That is completely exempted. So this is another, another thing you have to remember. Your LIC maturity amount will be exempted from tax. So I hope this module was helpful for the students. This is the first module where I explained what is tax, definition of tax, the provisions of income tax, features of income tax, features of income and exempted income. So this, if you are like this or if you want any suggestions and feedback, I am giving my details at the end of the PPT. So this, you, I am giving my I am giving my official mail ID also. So you can mail it to me and you can send, tell your feedback and suggestions so that I can improve. And this online mod module also will be helpful for the teacher and the students. Let more students get the benefit. You tell the other students, if you know anybody who are struggling to learn the subject, especially in this lockdown period, you please tell them. You send this contact with the, you share this information with the, your contacts other college students. So it will be beneficial for more students. Thank you. See you with the next module.